Okay, I think you know, uh, the, the commonality between uh, uh, all the four groups seems to be the same. I think you know, uh, almost everybody uh, found it difficult to define uh, a river. Uh, in terms, I think you know, we had uh, almost every group has the question mark, uh, who are we defining it for and for what purpose we are defining it for. Uh, and also looking at the river, uh, the current state of the river, and uh, also on the, from geological time scale uh, to recorded time scale, I think, you know, what is the time frame we will take to define a river? And these were some of the questions which made things more difficult. Uh, having said that, I think you know, I would uh, like to open the floor if uh, people would like to comment on all the four come, uh, presentations and come out with some suggestions as to how we take it forward, the way forward. Well, I think you know, that's what, you know, maybe that's what you should uh, start say, talking about. In, in our group, we uh, in fact decided not to define and merely describe. The general consensus was that we will describe the river, river system, the river phenomena, and not define because uh, it's, a, uh, it's too constrictive for the river to, to, to say that we will define you. Uh, the river is a dynamic system. And uh, I, I agree with the fact that uh, there is no need to define, but for, uh, for reasons of uh, uh, interaction with the government, I don't know whether you, you want to give them a definition. Uh, can, I, can I comment? Sure, sure. Uh, I think even if we are describing, it is kind of definition. So uh, we may not have one paragraph uh, giving a definition or but if, even if we have, say, maybe four, five, six lines describing it, uh, that's a, a kind of uh, definition. So uh, I, I don't think there is uh, too much of a contradiction between the term definition or description. But if we agree to even describe it, that's good enough. Uh, let me just uh, mention that uh, what, what will be the fate of this description or a definition? I did try to clarify this, but let me cl clarify it again. This description or a definition that we will agree today, or we could even agree to maybe form some kind of a group which might further work on it and four, uh, four description or four de definitions, they could try to maybe amalgamate or come up with something. That is, a, that is because we have three days more. Uh, that will actually be the defining statement or the opening statement of the India, River Ch India Charter for Rivers. So we, from, from practical point of view, we really need something to emerge out of this conference as a description or a de definition of river which would feed into that India Charter for Rivers that we want to put together at the end of the conference and adopt. So I, th I think... Uh, uh, what I want to say is something which applies to all groups. What is a definition? A definition is really a linguistic concept. You define a term. You don't define the river, the Ramana or the river Ganga. You define the term river. So there are two or three different ways of approaching it. One is to take a wide range of rivers, say the Ganga, the Yamuna, the Euphrates and Tigris, the Amazon, the Thames, the Mississippi. Why do we call them rivers? What is common to all of them? That's one way of looking at it. Secondly, what are the elements which must absolutely exist in order to, for us to call it a river? There may be certain things which one river has which another river does not have, but both are rivers. You will not deny the term river to a river because it doesn't have all those characteristics. What are those characteristics without which it can still remain a river? And what are those characteristics with, in the absence of which it ceases to be a river? These are the different ways in which you can approach this. The third point I want to make is, we should not in this 
definitional exercise incorporate our views we may feel this should not be done that should not be done this is the way it should be a definition has no place for this a definition should be clearly an identification of those characteristics which will suppose you take a canal a tank a well ground water a river now why do you call this river you don't call those things rivers what is the defining characteristic one of this it flows one of the things which uh, earlier was said even in the morning that if it doesn't flow it's not a river but similarly there may be essential defining characteristics without which we will not use the term river so if you look at it that way you will arrive at some kind of a conclusion that is those which are found in a very large number of rivers common to very large number of rivers those characteristics in the absence of which a body can still be called a river those characteristics in the absence of which it ceases to be a river and then we are not in the def definition we are not saying what kind of a river we, we want to that's a different exercise that is what we want it to be like that's not a definition that is something else it's a declaration it's a charter whatever you call it so i thought i would give you this clarification i think i'm not going to take our question and i want to add one because since i won't be here tomorrow i wanted to can we make a recommendation at the end of this 3 days or 4 days plastic should be totally banned from the country if you want to keep our rivers clean is it possible to do that plastic with plastic use i think never you can clean the rivers never we can uh, then, uh, delhi roads may be clean but if you go into the country said all filth mm. filth gets sorted by plastic plastic does not scrape we can live without plastic 50 years ago we were not using plastic we can't be one recommendation many years ago no, there was a recommendation and bnhs had their conference bc was there 1983 let us control your human population that was recommendation made one recommendation which should have solved all our problems nobody nobody listen to that now let us focus on one problem remove plastic from the country let us set a model to the other world actually the plastic is destroying everything getting into ocean sorts yeah no i i i just wanted to uh, talk in the context of today because you know all these definitions and descriptions understanding has to be in some context and the context is unfortunately for rivers not a very happy one so i just like to say two things that you know for one thing which has been emphasized in all the groups that the river is a fundamental human resource that addresses the needs of human beings the second thing that i want to say about a river is why i think it's important to call it a living entity just excuse me i'm sorry this phone is ringing up is that every living system it doesn't matter what it is from a flea to us to whatever cockroach or the planet remains actually in a steady state it's called its metabolism that's how your your temperature body temperature remains the same your plasma remains the same that's how your trace elements remain the same and every system has to have an energy source plants have the sun and the soil animals have the plants and we have the animals and the plants or whatever and we maintain a steady state now what has been deranged over the last 40 years is that there is no steady state everything is in decline completely so the idea of a living system or the metabolism which goes with the river which actually is a survival resource for everybody else is a very important idea that it must hold its steady state it's called homeostasis if you like okay to use a scientific term i'm not saying we use that but just to understand it what we want to do today is at least hold the rivers in a state which was a healthy state about 40 years back and i think if we are going to go much beyond all that then it is going to be end up being an enormous narrative which people might like to read but it won't be effective as as it is difficult to define river so i want to uh, propose two combination definition and description of the river both let it go together because otherwise the defi definition of river will be so complex that 
we will take another 50 years to allow judiciary to play with that word. So let's have a two combination. One is a definition and also about description of the river so that it helps definition and description both. That is one. I'll give you why I'm saying so because we always talk in terms of looking at the river in terms of land. There is no problem in debate when problem of river issue is resolved in the name of this is river. Problem is the width. How you count width? Whether your house and at the bedroom or at the wall of your house or you consider compound wall or even beyond that you consider uh, that particular place as your house. So how you are going to look at the uh, river in that sense? And that's why I, I, I consider also define give description of the river which are the component which you want to include part of the river wetland various streams number of things which we want to include which difficult to put in one definition i think it's i think it's important to uh, reflect on some of the attempts to not necessarily define a river, but to give a description of a river. You know? Like, at least I find three three groups already coming up with sort of a uh, sort of a preliminary, you know, definition of a river. Uh, like the Kaveri, our group, uh, there is a strong effort to come up with a technical aspect of the definition. You know, something that we, that is worth looking into. And the second aspect, the second one, uh, the group that gives lives to river. Uh, I think that 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 has a very strong essence of of river as life, you know, and I think uh, there is a strong element that we, that that we can incorporate uh, from there. Uh, and the third aspect, uh, there is another group. I think the loose that again tries to come up with a definition that incorporates the challenges of a river, you know, flowing through, you know, whatever challenge uh, coming up. So um, I don't know whether we can incorporate that part, but. If we can integrate at least those three aspects, you know, the one, the technical aspect, again, secondly, the the one in, uh, uh, incorporating the aesthetic uh, aspect, you know, that that has a strong focus on on reverse as life, you know, and also the last part, probably, I think we will be able to come up with a not necessarily a rigid, a concrete uh, definition, but something that can, uh, you know, come, uh, they can provide a, you know, uh, at least a comprehensive uh, understanding of what a river looks like, yeah. Thank you. I have two points to make. Uh, one is regarding the timelines or time scales. I think it's a dangerous territory in the sense that we'll never be able to explain the river 40 years or 100 years or 200 years back. Different rivers are altered at different time scales. Let's take example of Belga, which is altered in 1850 or before that. And then it was again altered for lower Gunga Canal system. So we'll never be able to have data sets to say that, OK, it used to be like that. So time scale, to me, should be out of the definition. And the second thing, which is basically from the Narmada group, uh, you have one uh, irrigation as a function of the river. So is it to do with large scale irrigation projects or? was integrated as part of the function Reflect. of the river. I don't think any of this. It was traditionally being uh, used, no? I mean, the irrigation as a concept and as a work of the river <coughs> was uh, anyways used. We only implied that, not the large-scale irrigation projects. I mean, it, uh, yeah. Good, you clarified. No. <laughs> not in favor of that. And... Uh, yeah, Ajke. Fine, we'll... Uh, we are talking about large-scale Yes, so either we don't say irrigation under the functions because when we say it implies to major medium irrigation schemes. So that's the danger. Okay, and uh, now that I actually have the mic, can I just like take the liberty to make two points? Actually, just one point. Uh, you know, everybody is saying that the reason that we, why do we want to define the rivers and everything, when I thought that when we were discussing this entire aspect was that in order to basically give the broad spectrum of what all comes within the definition of the river, because when we go about uh, talking about it, conservation and preservation, then we need to know what are the different aspects that we need to cover for conservation and protection. I mean, to me, that seemed like the understanding of in order to define. And that is why this exercise was, was uh, important. 
and uh, with the discussion i'm i'm actually a little confused if that was right or not was uh, manoj is, is it is, is is this something that you also had in mind that that to, in order to define the river we go ahead and we define holistically the factors that affect the river and therefore we move towards its conservation and protection it only seems logical in that sense. yeah yeah I just want to make a point. Uh, what I have seen the whole day of the of the presentation. Uh, Sorry. So what Dr. Ramaswamy Iyer said that we have to make a this definition which is based on which is what is common to river and what are the elements absolutely to uh, like needed to exist in of of a river. So what we have been discussing is uh, like we are uh, describing a river. We are not defining a river. A definition should be a very small, very precise, and very simple. Like Jitendra was saying that we need a very simple definition. So what <laughs> I do is I realize after meeting all of you and being part of that group, so what I can define a river. So I just start with that. I want to give a definition of a river. I don't want to go into a description of how a river functions, what a river does, what is the life or non-life. Because we are saying dead river, but that river term is there. So we have to say that if there is no life, then also it's a river. So how to define a river? So I have come to the conclusion: a large stream of water. <laughs> carrying water down from high areas to low areas the simple definition which i could understand if you say there is life or no life that is other part but if you are, even if you are saying it's not it's a no life but still a river only you must still be not a river so it should be like i can repeat it once again the last few water carrying water down from high areas to like low areas if if i could use this point to interject so actually this is a very good example of the confusion we have in terms of why are we doing uh, definitions so we could be doing it for only two reasons one is there, there is con confusion in the room as to what we are talking about you are talking about a canal indira gandhi canal to rajasthan while i'm thinking you are talking about a river you know yamuna or something like that so if that conf if you if the term is confusing for us we try to define it the other possibility is that when it's in the outside legal world particularly uh, the term gets used in a particular way which is so narrow that say for example you have a, a national river conservation law but the way the term river is defined in that law it applies only to like three uh, three rivers in the whole country or something just because of the way that law is defined or the term is defined in the law in which case we would want to stretch or expand that definition or modify it in certain ways or alternatively if it starts including irrigation canals it starts including uh, you know uh, wells and ponds as uh, mr ayer said then we have a problem so i'd like to actually hear from people whether they have encountered a problem either internally or externally in the world that there are you know very important acts or laws or policies or procedures that are being misapplied and again i strive because i straddle both sectors forest and water i'll give you the example from the forest forest sector in the forest sector the, for, the forest conservation act was a very important legal uh, tool that was passed in 1980 to try to regulate to some extent the conversion of forests and the way the word forest was defined it was defined as any piece of land legally defined legally classified as a forest in the act but you know using some other statutes so what happened as a consequence was both in the northeast of india and in certain parts of central and uh, western ghats certain tracts of land which were thickly forested and definitely classified as forest uh, you know understood as forest in common parlance in dictionary meaning etc got left out from the purview of the forest conservation act and the supreme court's 1996 ju judgment is an attempt a very poor and a bad attempt but an attempt to rectify that problem by redefining the term forest you know as it applies in the act so i think it's really important how much time we should we spend defining and redefining and describing the term river uh, in proportion to the nature extent of the problem do we really have a problem and in this case for example if we just follow our friend's definition maybe all irrigation canals will qualify as a river right and we can ask the question do we want that but right right Large stream. So you are the only recursive with then defining it as a stream. So I'll ask you, what is the definition of a stream? Stream, and then it'll go keep going backwards, right? So, uh, but I'm saying maybe there is never such a situation where a river conservation law was wrongly applied to a canal, or a, you know, a river use provision was wrongly applied. So maybe there is no problem. I was just using your thing as an example. So I think it's really important for us to say how important is this definition? Who is getting confused? And how much time should we spend to figure it out? Okay. I just had a suggestion that uh, uh, you know we need to probably do the 
this exercise, not do the entire exercise again. But come back to the question of defining a river at the end of the workshop or like you said that at the end of the conference or have a group uh, you know working on it because over the next two three days the discussions the issues that will get thrown up the range of issues will i think then you know uh, defining describing whatever it is that we choose to do make more sense otherwise the general flow of like academically you know we always think that we should start with defining first and then you know go into the problems and challenges later but we could even you know do it the other way around where we actually discuss the entire scope first of problems and challenges and uh, you know the legal technical political and all other aspects and then come down to actually defining because then it will make more sense to uh, you know to define because we would have actually discussed the whole spectrum like for instance the group on kaveri i mean they did end up discussing a lot of the challenges and what a river is not and things like that. So I think that we will need to revisit this later. I mean, attempting it on day one is more difficult. Bhaiya Mai Khe Haath Mein. Bhaut Baat Samjha, Bhaut Baat Nahi Bhi Samjha. Chaliye, Koi Baat Nahi. Haan. Marte Hain Hum, Bhogte Hain Hum. डिसीजन लेते हैं कोई तीसरे आदमी ये बड़ा बुरी बात है प्रजा का शासन प्रजा के लिए प्रजा के द्वारा ये संविधान निर्माताओं ने बनाया था लेकिन डिसीजन लेने वाले वो पाँच सात गो लोग बैठ के डिसीजन कैबिनेट में ले लेते हैं या कहीं बैठ के आराम से ले लेते हैं ये बहुत बुरी बात है जो डूबता है जो मरता है उससे पूछा ही नहीं जाता है कि वो मरता क्यों है अभी हमारे एक भाई ने कहा कि प्लास्टिक फैक्ट्री को बंद करा दिया जाए बड़ा अच्छा बात उन्होंने कहा था बंद नहीं होगा सर नाटक जरूर होगा प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस होगा भाषण दिए जाएंगे हमारे यहाँ नदियों का जाल है मैं बिहार से आता हूँ साइड टीवी पर आप लोगों ने देखा होगा कुछ लोग गए भी होंगे मैं उस क्षेत्र से आता हूँ जहाँ नदियाँ ही नदियाँ हैं जिसको आप नदी समझते हैं मैं शायद नाला समझता हूँ जाल बिछा हुआ मैं जिस जिला से आता हूँ नदियों का ससुराल कहलाता है खगड़िया उसकी 146 उपधाराएं हैं कितना नदी देखना है फरकिया में उसको फरकिया भी कहा जाता है फरक किया अखबरें फरक कर दिया था आप क्या कीजिएगा ये सारी कहानियां हैं डूबते हम हैं मरते हम हैं हमसे पूछा ही नहीं जाता है कि तुम्हारा विकास हो सकेगा इसे पहली बात आप कभी नहीं पूछा न पब्लिक से और न नदी से कि तुमको बांधे या नहीं बांधे हमने कहा था हमारी सिस्टर बैठी हुई हैं माँ कहते हैं हम भैया बुरा नहीं मानिएगा हम लोग कितने अभागे बेटा हैं कि माँ को बेड़ियों से बांध दिया माँ को बेड़ियों से जकर दिया हम लोगों के साथ तो कुपुत्र को पैदा ही नहीं लिया तो माँ को फ्री कर दो ना अभिशाप देगी जब रोएगी तो कुष्ठ फूटेगा फूट रहा है सच्चाई यही है आप क्या करोगे मैं नहीं जानता लेकिन मैं अनुरोध जरूर करता हूं हमारे बांध को तोड़ दो देश हमारा है मालिक हम हैं अगर हैं तो हमारे सर ने सुप्रीम कोर्ट में फाइल किया है उनको यह भी लगा देना चाहिए कि हमारी मां को फ्री कर दो नदी को फ्री कर दो और वो जो फड़का है वो बिजली जम जमाने के लिए बना दिए थे उसको ध्वस्त कर दो सारा बह के चल जाएगा समुद्र में उसको भी ध्वस्त कर दो और फ्री करो ये सारे चीज को ये सारा नाटक और अगर अनुपम मिश्रा ने कहा था हमारे गुरु हैं कि हमने नहीं तो मैं भी यही कहता हूं कि ऋषि मुनि तपस्या किए नदी के किनारे कब किए नहीं किए उन्होंने तो कभी नदी को नहीं छुआ आई हम लोग आजादी के बाद जब पैदा ले लिए दस गो होशियार लोग वही सबसे बेसी नदी को समझने लगे हैं इसलिए इस सब नाटक बंद करके अगर आप रिकमेंडेशन दे सकते हैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट में केस फाइल कर सकते हैं तो ऐसे सवालों को खड़ा कीजिए जनता को जागरूक कीजिए जनता से पूछिए कि क्या करें वो आपको बतला देगा कि क्या कर रहा चूंकि डूबता हुआ है मरता हुआ है जिस दिन बांध तोड़ दीजिएगा और फर्क का फ्री हो जाएगा 
इतना एग्रीकल्चर होगा हमारे क्षेत्र में पलायन रुक जाएगा रोजगार मिल जाएगा ये सब जो नाटक रेल मंत्री और करता है मजदूर एक्सप्रेस है जनसेवा एक्सप्रेस ही और सब बंद हो जाएगा लोग खुशहाल हो जाएंगे जीने लगेंगे तो थोड़ा सा कृपा हम लोगों के लिए भी करिए बिहार वालों के लिए ऊपर वालों के लिए तो भगवान सोच ही रहा है जी सरकार धन्यवाद हेलो मैं एक छोटी सी बात कहना चाह रहा था कि जैसा आपने कहा कि एक छोटी सी एक परिभाषा होनी चाहिए ताकि हम आम आदमी को समझा सकें तो मैंने शायद अपने ग्रुप में भी कही थी मैं उसे फिर दोहरा देता हूं यहां पर कि प्राकृतिक जल के निरंतर प्रवाह को नदी कहते हैं ये कह सकते हैं प्राकृतिक जल के निरंतर प्रवाह को धन्यवाद I just wanted to add a few points. Rajiv Sinha from IIT Kanpur. Uh, well, I mean, if you look at what these definitions we are talking about, this is these are all available in the in the standard English dictionary or Wikipedia, whatever you want to do that. Any river is called as a flowing water, right? And we don't have to repeat that. We are not going to reinvent that wheel again here, basically. So I think <clears throat> if you want to change that definition in the Wikipedia of river, which I just checked this morning, then you need to include other aspects. And these are the aspects which came out. And I was quite happy that all, almost all the groups have identified the aspects correctly. And these are, first, that the river is a geological entity, which means that it existed much before the mankind arrived on this planet. Second, that it is an ecological entity. It is, of course, a hydrological entity, which everybody knows. We have been defining the river like that. And then, of course, the services part is a bit you know, tricky to define. What do you define as a service and what do you not define, what you don't define as a service? So that's something which we can debate upon. The second point, very quickly, I want to put, which Nitin pointed out a while ago, is that let's also ask this question, why are we defining this river at all? The reason why we want to do that that there are rivers which are no longer rivers. They have, they, are, they have been long dead and they need to be revived. The question is that when you, want to be, when you want to revive these rivers, you have no idea, you have no criteria to define to which level you want to take it to, where there are no baseline conditions available, right? So therefore, this definition has to be aimed at concluding or getting, getting to that baseline condition. If I want to revive, let's say, Jamuna, I want to define what a river or what Yamuna should have looked like, it doesn't matter when, but it is also not possible to revive this, any of these rivers in the world today to a pristine condition. Let's be, let's be practical on that. No river can be revived today to a pristine condition. So the definition of that baseline condition has to be very practical, has to be subjective to the river, has to be subjective to the condition to which a river has degraded. Okay, a terminal patient of cancer cannot be revived. Let's be honest about that, right? If or so, 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 or, or it has to be given life to a certain extent. So a river state, uh, at what state the river is, that will also decide to, which, to what level you can revive that river. So these are all very practical questions. So I think the fundamental point is that let us come up with a definition how we would like to see a river to be like and and that will ultimately define the baseline condition of river. That's the purpose, to my mind, of what, why we are debating it today. Thank you. Well, uh, actually, I agree with you. Uh, but in I would like to add also. Uh, I also had the same uh, uh, problem. In fact, I talked to you and I was talking to everybody about this. Uh, that, you know, why are we uh, at all entering into defining the river, as uh, Professor Ayer was saying, it is more linguistic. And when we are best, we might describe, may not define. It's more inclusive. And then that's why Malika, in, towards the end, she said, it is actually, you know, inclusive, open, heterogeneous, continuous, and unique. We could really uh, define in those terms. But uh, Rajiv Sinha's uh, point is very valid, but still, I would still think that it is necessary to really describe or define a river for the simple reason that, now I'm still saying that it is still important, having agreed fully to what you have said, that it is still important to define or describe a river because we have to know what could be, you know, what, to, what exactly is the, is the ideal system of a river uh, to, in, the, in, the, in the sense that, you know, our normative concerns about river. Like, you know, Malika's uh, president about what is not a river. 
You know, in this slide, she said, what is not a river? The we, that's why we discussed it. That clearly tells you that we have deviated a great deal from what could be an ideal river. So once you understand that, once you have that kind of an understanding, then you will know where to go, what can be done. Okay, I think in that sense, this is important.